have your Bibles, though, let's, let's go to Exodus chapter 2 this morning. It is Mother's Day, and so I'd like, to, I'd like to speak about a great mom in the Bible. Only fitting on Mother's Day that we do that, open the Word of God and, and see. Someone said this, as significant as political and mi- military and education or religious figures may be, none compared to the impact made by a mother. I tell you, we all have stories, I imagine, about our mother. The wonderful investment, the wonderful things, maybe the nuances of how we were raised. Probably, in a crowd this size and with the online crowd as well, I'm sure that there was someone who could say, well, I didn't have a great experience with my mom. But I tell you, moms overall are priceless. Often it is thankless, a thankless job. And I'm so thankful for godly mothers. I read a story about a little boy who was in a Sunday school program. We do those here at First Baptist Church. And he was up on the stage, and his mom, like our moms do, was sitting right in the front. Now, we have some open seats in the front, but come Children Production Day, these things are packed shoulder to shoulder very early in the morning. The Treadways often sit here when they're in town, but on those days, they can't have those seats because people are here at 3 a.m. Black Friday has nothing on a Sunday school production here at First Baptist Church in Bridgeport. But it was one such production where a little child was giving a lines and this little child had forgotten their lines. And this happens. We don't mind it if it's not our child. Another child, we think it's cute. Our child, parents, we're in a dead sweat. We think to ourselves, they know the lines. We practice the lines. We went over the lines. Remember the lines that this child could not remember the lines. And finally, his mother from the front few pews said, I am the light of the world. The child with a big grin on his face said, My mom is the light of the world. <laughs> oh, well, there are those times there's a lot of truth in that statement, is there not? Moms have a special place in families and life. This morning I want to talk about a particular mother in the Bible in Exodus chapter 2. Some will be familiar, so maybe some not so much. The child of this mother is a well known figure. The child of this mother mother is a man named Moses. Moses who led the children of Israel out of Egypt. Moses who stood before Pharaoh. Moses who wandered in the desert and and led in a large way, larger than life individual. A man who, who walked with God, who knew God. A man who got to see the glory of God. It affected him so that he, he, he glowed. They had to put a veil over his face. He, he was shining so brightly. Moses, who got to be a part of the Red Sea crossing. Moses, who got to see water come from a rock. Moses, who got to hold the, the physical rocks of the Ten Commandments. Both copies after he broke the first copy. Moses, Moses had a amazing mother. And we find the story of this mother of Jochebed in Exodus, Exodus chapter number 2. So if you have your Bibles, if you have please, Exodus chapter 2, beginning in verse number 1, we'll look at verses 1 through 10. And the Bible says, And there went a man of the house of Levi, and took to wife a daughter of Levi. The woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him Three months. When she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. Verse number five of Exodus chapter two. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw in the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept, and she had compassion on him, and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. And then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew woman, that he, she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. The child grew. She brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses. And she said, Because I drew him out 
of the water. We can't let's go, Lord, in prayer as we begin this part of our service this morning. Lord, I thank you for the moments that we have to look at your word and look at the story of this lady who had some unique characteristics. And Lord, I pray that our hearts would be challenged this morning. One, Lord, that we'd be thankful for the mothers that you have given to us, the blessing. Lord, for the mothers here today that would be challenged, be reminded of what it looks like to be a godly mother. And Lord, I pray that our hearts would be challenged and touched. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us today. Lord, I pray that if there's someone here who doesn't know you as Savior, that today would be the day that they commit their life and heart to you and believe in Jesus. Lord, I love you, and I thank you for the time that we have. Lord, I thank you for the godly mothers that are part of this great church. We ask for your help during this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Moses' mother, though not named here, we know her name is Jochebed. We have in Scripture just a few just a few simple verses giving us a story on this amazing lady. We'll go on to read about Moses for many, many pages of Scripture. We'll read about the exploits of Moses and we'll read about his, his success and we'll read about his failings. We'll read how he did good things and did some bad things and all these pages dedicated to Moses and Moses, a, a strong figure in Scripture, but I would submit this morning that a dynamic figure in Moses' life was his mother with three absolutely life-changing, dynamic characteristics. With three attributes that ought to be attributes that we all strive for, but particularly on Mother's Day that moms could emulate today. Because Moses would not be around without his mother. Not just giving birth, but with the scenario going on. We kind of pick up in Exodus chapter 2 in the middle of the story. If we were to go back in Exodus chapter 1, we would find out that the children of Israel were in bondage in Egypt. And they were becoming such a big and large nation that the Pharaoh had said, Listen, my decree is this. If there is a female child born, she can live and a male child would not be able to live. You can imagine the consternation and the trauma that this would cause. So that's the snare we pick up when Moses is born. He's born in a time where it's not conducive for a male child to be born. He's born in an environment that does not, that does not carry well. I know a lot of moms and, and wonderful mothers here and wonderful parents here, and I know that parents seem to always want their child to have it better than they had it. They, they want their child to have character and be able to work hard, but, but some of the things maybe that they didn't have as a child, if they can give to their children, then as a parent, you feel, you feel glad about that. And here, the, the mother of Moses has this, this male child, knows a decree from Pharaoh, and now must make a choice. But moms, is it really a choice? Moms, I've seen you. I've seen you with your children. I was principal for 12 years when I realized the full concept of the term mother bear. And I still remember the first time that I had this enlightening, earth-shattering moment. I still remember it like it was yesterday. I remember where I was at my office. I remember who it was. And I will not say who it was in case they're still here. My lips are forever sealed. Well, maybe not for the right, no, no, my lips are sealed. But I remember this day in my office, sitting at my desk, and this mother was full bore mother bear swinging at me, verbally, not physically, verbally. I remember that day in the office, I'm sitting there, and I've kind of had one of those out-of-body experiences. You ever had those before? Where you're here, but you're not really here? I'm in the chair listening to this unique perspective on life. I remember thinking, why is this lady so mad at me? Like, I didn't do anything. I wasn't part of the problem. I'm often part of the problem, but I wasn't part of the problem this time. I was probably part of the solution as principal. I'm like, she is so angry at me, and I am like, am out of it completely. And then it hits me. She has intense love for, the, for her child. And she's swinging at anything that is standing in her perceived way. And right now, I'm in the way. My, my, my next thought was, like, how do I get out of the way? <laughs> <laughs> I 
But I, that day did not, I, to this day I remember, I did not think, well, that's shameful. I did not think that's embarrassing. I did not think, wow, that's, that's weird. I remember thinking, I am so thankful to have a mom who cares so much for a child. And then I thought, I wish all moms cared this much. I want to point out three characteristics this morning, three attributes uh, from the story of Jochebed. Number one, I want you to notice this. When I look at Jochebed, I first of all see a woman who had sacrificial love. Boy, Jochebed put herself on the line in this situation. The, the Pharaoh, the leader, had said, listen, this should not happen. There's a male child. It, it cannot be allowed, cannot be allowed to survive. And Jochebed said, you know what? I don't care what the, what, what the authority is going to say. All right, I value the life as we ought to. All right, because God is the author of life. She values the life and was willing to put herself on the line for the sake of her child. Sacrificial, undying love. If that does not, if that does not challenge us, remind us of what a mother is like, I don't know what does. I remember reading a story about a young boy who was in math class. Teacher said, she said, son, she said, if there are your mom and your dad and your, and your um, four siblings, so there's seven of you in the house, and you have a pie, and you cut it into pieces, how many pieces will there be? And the boy said six. The teacher said again, she said, no, no, you don't understand. If there's your mother and your father and your four siblings, two, three, four, and yourself, all right, so there's seven of you in the house, and you cut into pieces, how many will there, will there be? He goes, six. She goes, no, son, there'll be seven. Seven pieces of pie. He said, nope, you don't know my mother. If she saw all of us wanted pie, she would say she didn't want any. And moms, you know what I'm talking about in that situation. Sacrifice. Jochebed displayed, displayed that sacrifice. In fact, I read this in a recent study. It shows that a child, by the time a child reaches 18, that a mom, now mom, you better sit down for this number. All right, because some of you are going to like, Multiply this number by the number of children you have. All right? They said that in the recent study that by the time a child reaches 18, a mother will handle an extra 18,000 hours of child-generated work. Or, or, in this study, a woman who has a child, who does not have a child, will have an extra three, equivalent three months in a year of leisure time. That's amazing. That's amazing. I don't know what it is for dads. Extra 30 seconds? No, we get dads in this room too. But I see in this account, I see Jochebed having sacrificial love, being willing to put herself on the line, to say, listen, I love Moses so much. He was a goodly child, and I, and I respect God so much that I will, I will sacrifice my own safety for the safety of my child. And the Bible says that she saw it was a goodly child that she made like a, little, like a little basket. The Bible calls it an ark, an ark of safety. And puts some things in there to seal it, make it watertight, and puts a lid on it and puts it into the river, the Nile River. If you know anything about this river, there's other things larger than children in this river. There are other dangers in this river, and she puts her daughter by the, by the edge just to wait and Sure enough, in a few minutes, apparently, Pharaoh's daughter comes down and, and like any curious individual, says, why, what's that unique shape? And they pick it up and open the lid and there, there the child is. Of course, the daughter steps in and Miriam steps in and says, hey, do you need, a, do you need a, uh, someone to take care of this child? I still believe, as I read the Bible, that Pharaoh's daughter was no fool. I think Pharaoh's daughter knew exactly what was going on. That Pharaoh's daughter knew exactly who Miriam was going to go get to take care of this child. And just see that sacrificial love of Jochebed saying, I will willingly put myself on the line. Pharaoh's daughter could have said, no, I'm going to follow what Pharaoh says, but she didn't. Not only do I see sacrificial love in this passage, I see here some amazing wisdom. Amazing wisdom. As I look at this passage in these 10 verses that we read, I see that she knew right where to put Moses in the river. She knew right how to make this ark so that it wouldn't leak. 
She knew who to put by the river, and I'm sure that she had instructed and given Miriam what to say to Pharaoh's daughter. I see some amazing, amazing wisdom. And I was thinking as I was preparing for this message that moms are really smart, are they not? Moms know how to fix broken limbs and broken hearts. Moms know what to say and what not to say and when to speak and when not to speak. They know how to comfort and how to correct. But I know this, that true wisdom, this wisdom was not because Jochebed was raised as a mother correctly. True wisdom comes from above. The Bible says, but wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits. Charles Wesley was a great man of the faith, ministered and, and wrote songs, hymns that some we still sing to this day. Charles Wesley said this, he said, I learned more about God from my mother than from all the theologians in England. We find out that Moses went to live with his mother for a while. Eventually was put back in Pharaoh's house. But Moses, throughout the rest of his time, knew about God. He knew the way of the Hebrew children. He knew about deliverance, the, the prophecies that would happen. He knew how to worship God. He knew about Jehovah. Where do you think he learned that from? I don't believe he learned it in Pharaoh's house. I don't think he learned it from the other teachers that Pharaoh would have taught those things. He would have taught those things. I believe he learned it from his mother and his father in his house. See, Jochebed was a woman of sacrificial love, of amazing wisdom. But number three this morning, probably the most important point she was a woman of profound faith. I w would ask you to, if you would, please turn to the book of Hebrews. It's in the New Testament. In Hebrews chapter 11, we're going to find another reference to Moses' parents. Hebrews chapter 11 is known as the Hall of Faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, we have many people mentioned who displayed great acts of of faith, great decisions of faith. And in Hebrews chapter 11, we have a few verses that are given to Moses. But I think no, almost no greater verse in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 23, where the Bible says, by faith, by faith, not just by love, not just by wisdom, not just by logic, not just by uh, some strength or courage, but by faith. Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. I love how scripture tells us that there was some profound faith displayed by Moses' parents. Faith that was life-changing. Faith that was life-altering. There's a great preacher by the name of G. Campbell Morgan. G. Campbell Morgan preached many years. He had four sons. All four of his sons also became preachers. And one time someone came to G. Campbell Morgan, the great preacher, asking about his family. So they asked one of his sons, Howard. They said, Howard... Who is the greatest preacher in your family? They thought he might say his father. They might, thought he might say himself or one of his brothers. But to their surprise, Howard Morgan said this. Without a moment's hesitation, he said, my mother. Moms, you have the opportunity for a tremendous and life-altering, life-altering uh, place of influence. I was teaching last week in our young couples class, and I mentioned this, this concept. That I have time, at times I have seen families where both mom and dad don't love God. In these times, if mom and dad don't love God, not every time, but often, if mom loves God, the children will still follow God. I've seen it in Scripture with different individuals. We see it with Timothy. You see it there, that where, where perhaps the, both parents aren't on the same page, but if mom loves God, I've seen the children will still love God. 
And moms, you have a tremendous opportunity of influence. Oh, of course, the best scenario is for mom and dad to be on the same page, for both mom and dad to display faith and display the sacrifice for Jesus Christ. But moms, understand that you and your faith can alter the course of not just one and not just two, but you can alter the course of generations. You see, Moses didn't just save himself. Moses didn't just affect himself. Moses affected no less than a million plus people in the children of Israel. And the Bible says that through them that all the nations of the earth could be blessed. And it would be safe to say that the faith of Jochebed has affected billions, with a B, of people. A simple act of faith with eternal effect. How powerful is that? How powerful? You think, well, all I'm doing is, is just doing a little bit of saving, just a little bit of, of slime and pitch inside this ark, and a little action to put this in the water. Seemingly small action out of faith had an effect on billions of people. It takes faith. It takes faith as parents to trust God. It takes faith to point them in the, in the way of the Lord. It takes faith to, to dedicate our children to God and to allow God to have control in their life. Listen, as a dad, I get it. I get it that, that listen, I want to control the environment. But I know, and I knew early on, without God, this is impossible. I pray often, and I hope you parents do as well, God, help me not to mess up my children. Boy, sometimes you hear a child say something. Don't say that again. Where'd you hear that? From their mother. I jest. No. You see, moms, sacrificial love, amazing wisdom, and profound faith equaling influence and effect on billions of people. You may feel lost in the corner we don't know much else about the life of Jochebed. We don't know if she was really famous after this. We don't know how long she lived. We don't know her story much beyond this little simple time of her life. But I'll tell you this. This action was no ordinary action. And my friend, it may seem like today is a normal day, but it may be anything less than normal. It may, be, it may seem that you're just doing what you do with, with simple love and some wisdom from above and some faith in God. But my friends, God can take those things and take our small actions and do something powerful with them. I'm so thankful for godly mothers. I'm thankful that I'm married to a godly wife who's a godly mother. I'm thankful for a godly mother in my life who's a prayer warrior. And moms, I'm thankful for you. Let God use you. You can touch millions.